I think re tsago re presents ke bogosi le gore ba bogologolo bo le mo mo tha asa asa botso sepe bona e go I don't imagine it doesn't matter how you know gently want to be how nice want to be go I don't imagine go gona le mongwe o sa boneng gore tota hela how un sa mo khosi mo sadi hela ka go go sana ba baka gore a ka re le hatsela ke la ga go hela ya ka lwena lene lene la e ga mo ntsa tsentse gore either she na sa perform go pace ga pata this is a representative we represent the hats go a different for a go kwa mo ntsa ka gore ga o tlo mo rata ka ntse go tin eh eh tsontse re mo ntsa ka mabaka ka le mo molao ha pa go kwa mo ntsa la go claim o le speaker gore o resign no ntse re ha resign o bo tsenya unity mo teng ha gore a no ha ga ba nna jalo bo mo tenegala ga pele lo bo imisa disciplinary hearing ke gore mo you're very tactical in like how you think because you know you you, you do law um didn't you think there was going to be backlash by you quitting of course uh, 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 an appointment by the president of course i mean i mean nobody quits being a minister i mean nobody quits that four bedroom house yeah nobody nice, takes house. you know quits that black car mm. and the white car you know and the trips abroad mm. you understand mm. you know so you, did. you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so for me i've never defined myself by the, the positions i've held i'm yeah. unity dow because i come shoot the whole thing i live in my the same house that i've always lived in i didn't take up those four, four bedroom house that you're talking about yeah. i live with od your small car cannot even reach my house yeah. i live in a very you know rough not rough but ground in terms of it's not a great neighborhood but yeah. in the sense that it's not i didn't like well but that's that's who i am yeah. that's where i live you see so um of course i didn't want the cut in salary yeah. you know it's very painful you know but it was something that i was willing to take because i wasn't willing to compromise on my principles Yo yo, what's happening everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Pudi Cast right here at Leo's Inn in Mo well, Mo di Tsane in Gaboroni. Ne ke ka re middle star. But what's going on guys? Welcome to the show and um proudly brought to you by the good people here at Local Corner. I'm your host SCAR and as usual, every single week we have an amazing guest with us who's uh, going to hang out with us because, you know, We 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 like them and we want to know a lot more about them. And uh, in the house today, without further ado, because we did start off a bit late, uh, in the house we're joined by uh, Mozana Loya, a human rights activist and a specially elected member of parliament, a writer, and someone who's also served as a judge of the High Court of Botswana and in various Botswana government ministries. Ladies and gentlemen, in the house today we are joined by none other than Mayor Unity Dow. Hello, ma. Thank you. I'm really really sorry about us being late. <laughs> no, you you she let us have it, guys, because the teller no we did. We did start off a bit late. You were you were coming in from parliament. That's correct, sir. Um, you no. told me 3 o'clock. I was here at 3 o'clock. I know. You were ready at 3 o'clock. Um, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a, a deeply 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 sorry uh, because we are really really excited that you are here uh, as well. Um you were saying you were coming in from parliament. Is parliament every day? For, for parliament is know. every day every weekday. Hey. Um, on Mondays, Wednesday, and Wednesdays, um, um, it starts at two o'clock and okay. ends at seven. Okay. On Fridays, starts in the morning at nine o'clock and ends at twelve thirty. Okay. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, it starts at eleven in the morning, mm. lunch break, and it ends at seven. Okay. So until you know, and it's on until the first week of April. Okay. Yep. So the people's work is being done every every time. Because <laughs> now I used to think what there was a particular time for the sitting. and then during the rest of the year or or you know if you are in the ministries or whatever you get to do other business so it's always on no 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 i mean it's um it goes on recess hey, hey. Like, um, we just came from recess okay so now this session you know will continue until the first week of april okay and then there will be um a, what we call the winter session okay which is in july awesome and of stuff. course this year then the parliament will be dissolved and we go to elections in october okay so this is you know um 
the last but one uh, um, session of parliament uh -huh. before Ritual. Awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're really excited to have you here because like, we, we always want to get as much history as we can about Botswana, especially mm -hmm. about prominent names such as yourself. Like, I, I don't think there's a lot of people, be, Baba Yatuta in 1980 or 1974, <laughs> uh -huh. who wouldn't know your name. Exactly. Like, you, your name is, is, is synonymous with excellence. Uh, and then you ultimately got into, into politics, which mm -hmm. was like a for everyone. Did yeah, you? for me too. <laughs> we're going to get into how you ended up in politics but we want to know about like the 60s you mm -hmm. know before did you have an inkling of what was going on couple 66 because you were born right before then mm -hmm. did you understand the change that was happening in the country then as a as a young lady in oh my lord as a five-year-old or six-year-old i guess seven-year-old worry you know there's hey, something happening here i mean when when i think about independence you mm -hmm. know um I vaguely remember oranges yeah. because, you know, of course, then you have oranges at, at, at school. Yeah. I vaguely remember the visit of uh, President Kaunda Komuchut. Yeah. You know, I, I cannot, I'm not too sure in terms of when it, it was. Yeah. Was it two years after independence? Maybe it was seven or eight at the time. Yeah. Um, when I think about independence or pre independence as well, around that period, I recall drought. Mm -hmm. I recall lining up for soup yeah. at the community center. Because there was no food. Because there wasn't enough food. Yeah. Yeah. It was a drought period yeah. in the country. It was a poor time in the country. Mm -hmm. And it was before there was actually consistent and continuing food in, in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we had walked across from Lady Mitchison Primary School, where I, st st you know, where I was going to school, mm -hmm. across the river. Because Andy Grant you know, was in charge of the community center at the time. Okay. And, uh, you know, so we actually did line up for soup. Soup kitchen. Eh, hey, my word. Mm, but even then, like, what, what, how big was education? Where the, the, was talk of education or was everyone, how was everyone going to be? Yeah, I mean, okay, education. I mean, at the time, I actually started in my first year of primary school in my womb, in, yeah. interestingly, you know, Tamalagani Primary School. Okay. Then, because my dad was working there at the time. Okay. Um, so we came to Muchudi. Instead of going to standard two, it was decided I should repeat because a cousin of mine, who was a year older than me, mm -hmm. was in Standard 1, and Hanka Mui Hita Gya Homotel. Facts. Yeah. I was in Standard 2, and I was in Standard 1, and I was in Standard 1, and I was in Standard 1, if I don't do that, I was in Motel. So that's how I was, you know, I was pulled a year behind. Okay. You know, and um, I went to Lady Mitchison Primary School. At the time, I mean, it was within walking distance from, from my home. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, like you said, the 60s, mm -hmm. and um, not sufficient food, really. My, my dad was working, so we were lucky in mm -hmm. many ways. What type of work was he into? My, my dad was, um, um, at the time, it was, it was a great term. He was an agricultural demonstrator. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 before hey, 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 an agricultural <laughs> demonstrator. So I was very proud. Because <laughs> my... <laughs> Mm. Hey, so basically, I mean, he worked in government uh, farms. He hey. was a, a rancher, mm. and uh, he was proud. He was one of the first cohort hey. of um, post-independence employees of the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. Hey, so we grew up around agriculture, around cattle. You know, around or just around the thought that you must have cattle. Hey. Around the thought that you must. So that was really the culture in my family. But people were. It, because I'm trying to think, or when we think history, a lot of the time, but mm -hmm. South Africa, it, it dominates a lot of what happens. Mm -hmm. we, we see a lot of segregation in mm -hmm. Eleto Natona. So acquiring mm -hmm. wealth, was it even a big thing for, for, for families such as yourself? I mean, um, for example, our neighbors were rich by, by those standards. Yeah. Um, they had lots of cattle. Okay. So they had more food than us, in yeah. a way, because there was always my freedom, my dealer. Yeah. There was always meat. You yeah. know, so they... That's why it was a big deal back then, Horobona like, Moraka. Exactly. Because you'd be self-sufficient. Yes. Yeah. You know, and you could sell them mm. cattle, you know, so... Um, but, yeah. So That's in great. terms of, yeah. But, because I'm trying to get the connection between that arable living, you know, um, and, and, and a law degree. 
you know <laughs> do you see it when you're all, all the way there komera ke ngo e le gore santse go tswa botswana o monyenyane how do we get to, how do we get there okay i mean first of all i think um, i grew up in a family family where my parents were big believers in education yeah hey. so a family of of eight mm. um but that going to school was never an option or mm. not going to school was never an option so from a young age we knew we had to we had to go to school mm. my dad was very very big you know um, on that my mum mm. as well and uh, in terms of what you're going to be as i get how many nyane everybody's going to be a teacher mm. i'm going to be a nurse. a nurse i'm going to be a teacher i get mm. you know you know i'm going to be a police officer i get mm. so those are the things that you, the people you see around you yeah. and that the people you you know aspire to be because you can't imagine being anything else yeah. you can't be, imagine being an astronaut yeah. i mean like really are you kidding me you know so <laughs> even being a lawyer was not something that was you know something in my cards growing yeah. up uh, and actually recently i was talking to um Uh, Makhama yeah. Dorin Kama yeah. she you know I tell her the story all the time I meet her I tell her story whenever I get a chance because she was the first lawyer I had I met yeah. you know so I was a high school um, student from five I got yeah. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next in my life and I'm thinking okay uh, sounds like uh, um, I, I have no idea I'm thinking I want to be a teacher You know, I want to be a police officer. I want to maybe not police officer because only males could be t- police officers. So even that was actually outside my realm, <laughs> you know. So and then this teacher, uh, my English teacher said, "Okay, I think you know you want to be a lawyer. You should be a lawyer." Mm-hmm. So then she organized a trip to go to Kaburoni. Mm-hmm. Was this your first time in Gabs? Um, <laughs> not really. Um, the first time in Gabs is another story. What was Gabs? Haburoni na kwa thing I got ground eh kana kwa bonzi amana le gore ha bonin tinali was like stables nya na kwa ntlha like saying la la ntlha 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 ka haburoni ha ke tla haburoni I think um ela ona ndi khantsa go ditele ke ha bile ha ba leko no 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 are we are we are we eh the first time ke tla haburoni actually uh we were going to visit my dad mm. during holidays and then i look at sunny side when i sunny side between here and lobatsky <laughs> there's a sunny side that there used to be a government ranch okay and my dad used to manage it okay he so totahela the first time i saw brahmans the first time i saw artificial insemination jalo jalo ke gone gone ko my dad was doing that mm. in, in that so then we had a car accident you know between kale and lobatsky mm. so we were taken by cars and ambulances i don't remember so we spent the night at princess marina hospital okay. so that was first my first not i was not injured so we were just on the so we can get to the law part when we're okay so, we are from five now yeah so i you know um this teacher thinks that um you know this is a something i should do so then we went to see makama and she's sitting there behind there all this line of books really mm. imposing looking books you know i'm supposed to ask her questions i was really you know dumbstruck mm. i could not get one word out i mean i i was supposed to ask her what how do you become a lawyer yeah. what does a lawyer do jalo jalo hey i was so impressed and so frightened and so awestruck that i hardly said anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah but she she was really my inspiration mm. in many ways yeah. so how do people go out back in the day because but what feel about me it was like the, the the world of milk and mama back in the day it felt like everyone could get on a plane and go outside no 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 first first your law degree at the university of botswana in swaziland eh so how, how how did you end up go born in scotland and like hey, i mean first of all you must remember that when i when i was um wanted to do you know uh do law yeah. when i was about to go to university Um, there was no law school in Botswana. Yeah. There was a university of Botswana also in Swaziland. Yeah. One university. Three poor countries that decided to put their resources together yeah. and so okay, there's going to be the University of Botswana, Lesotho and Swaziland. Yeah. In, in Lesotho there'll be law, in Swaziland there'll be um, commerce yeah. and accounting and in Botswana it's going to be education and other disciplines. Okay. Then Lesotho pulled out of the ag- agreement which left Botswana and Swaziland mm-hmm. now Eswatini so we went to University of Botswana and Eswatini mm-hmm. um that's how we started our law degree okay. but by the time we finished Swaziland had pulled out mm-hmm. so actually there were two universities so i really graduated from University of 
Swaziland, mm -hmm. even though I started at the University of Botswana and, and Swaziland. And then, of course, part of the program took you to Scotland. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a five-year program where you did two years in um, in Swatini before in, in Roma, mm -hmm. and then you went two years in uh, to Edinburgh, Scotland, and then you came back for your last year. Okay. So it's a five year program. So how you got? I mean, people say it was easy then. I mean, first of all, <laughs> yes, everybody who went to university got a job. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. But you must not forget that not everybody went to university. Mm -hmm. When I graduated, because Standard Seven, Lady Mitchison was graduating to go to Mulevi Secondary School. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I remember. I say this all the time because for me it's a, it's, a, it's a piece of information that gets stuck in my head because mm. I think it's so very important mm. that um, I remember then the head teacher, the, the principal of Mulifi, Remayine, a wonderful, wonderful man, mm. saying to us, you represent 20% of the children who wrote their Standard 7 exams. Mm. So not everybody who mm. wrote mm. Standard 7. Mm. So mm. only 25, 20%. Or out 80 percent, they will listen to Manahi. Hapol Hapul, not everybody had actually even gone as far as standard seven, exactly. As well. So, for me, I always find I always consider this really an important piece of information because it says you were some of you were among the lucky ones, mm. you were among the privileged ones, yeah. I mean, because if you remember that, that not quite thing, not do a lot school fees, mm. but soon after that, also, no one did their man or don't go thing, school fees, basically. Say miss you, mm -hmm. but so you know you, one has to appreciate that and that you know I didn't go to university. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I university. Mm -hmm. Process from diamonds. Yes. So which actually is the case now. Yeah. So uh, for me, it is important to know what you did not do everything alone. Nobody does anything alone. Yes, ma'am. As far as these diamonds, when they did pop up, whenever they did pop up for a mm -hmm. lot of people, um, and I like asking. I, I like asking this question too to a lot of, 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 of lawyers. Why, why, why don't people know a lot about this original deal? You know, any time and such thing. As a law student at the time, was it of interest to anyone? Like to understand how Botswana suddenly all of these things start changing? Okay, actually, you, you ask a very interesting question because the diamond is an interesting commodity mm. or resource because for the longest time, we didn't want to talk about them. Yeah. They were almost like the secret. Yeah. You know, um, you know I, 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 there was this, this, this rare stone that the average Muslim has never seen. Me too. I get, they've never seen it, but yet it builds their roads, it builds yeah. their schools, it builds their health facilities, but they've never seen it, they've never touched it. They're even afraid to talk about it. And it was almost like uh, to talk about diamonds used to be like <laughs> um, so yeah i mean those are very interesting agreements when you go back because yeah. if you look at the original agreements and how we, how they over time they um um transformed yeah. were updated you can see what totahala in terms of um, the relationship between DBS and Botswana is the one of the most successful and enduring triple P relationship. Yeah. I think people cited as, you know, one of the most enduring. Yes. Because it, 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 yeah. So, so it was marred in secrecy even back then. Like, because I, I hear people say when they do like the, 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 the uh, I don't know how how it's a when go go law school, when I did the case, but when I did the case, so make it like you put why wasn't it ever part of the curriculum? Can I? Because but there was no case. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't a case. So it needs to be a case. You don't just get like contract law or something. You just yeah, learn I mean, that. I, yeah, I mean, like, I guess if somebody you know was smart enough to talk about maybe triple P contracts hey. and so at examples, hey, hey. you know. The, but I remember when I was in, in law school, you know, um, we did get briefs. I mean, I, I hey. remember special workshops. Hello, The negotiators coming, or these people coming to brief us about diamonds and agreements, hey. But if you only twenty-one or nineteen, has <laughs> all ready set hey. If something's not an exam, I get. Hey. Hey. So, because even with, with 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 politics, I'm trying to figure out when the bug bit you. Because I get, I know you're saying, you know, you're starting your own law firm when you when 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 you graduate. Mm -hmm. You weren't thinking politics at this time. It was always. I'm just going to be the best lawyer that I can be. What was it? I mean, again, it depends on what it was politics. Like, um, party politics is different. I mean, everybody hey. does some politics. Yes, you definitely. Know, again, um, you know, in, in that little corner, in their different ways. Hey. And um, for, for me, if you, you know, um, I worked as a prosecutor 
at the AG's chambers for about two years. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the Lens Division, which was the most boring work I've ever, 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 ever done. Mm -hmm. Which was really, I mean, yeah. So Slow after, and tedious. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I mean, mo most of the contracts they are standard form contracts, mm -hmm. meaning that you don't, you can't do anything to them. They're standard form. In the same way, I get away. They give you a standard form contract. How do I negotiate? Anyway, so how do I learn? How do I? Was I not in a tabang mudise? Born or something? Tabang mudise. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. nobody teaches you a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but <laughs> yeah. But Just, after three years, I, I quit yeah. and founded my own law firm uh, with a friend, and then um, then of course the Dow case hit, mm. which really kind of in a way it took me in a totally, totally um, a direction that, you know, you don't necessarily plan to go, but it just takes you there. I, yeah. I think this would be, before we even get into the underdog case, you founded the first all-female um, law firm. There seems to be so many popping up right now. You know, if you were to compare then, uh, you know, uh, being a female lawyer, then mm -hmm. starting up your own law firm, yeah. and and now, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of differences, but like, of course. you know, what what would you commend as some of the the, the, the better things that have happened since you know you yeah, started yours? Yeah, I mean, when when I went to law school, I was the only girl in that class. Mm. There was only seven of us. Okay. Okay. And so, and when I went to Swaziland. My, account, my, my female counterpart was the only female in her class. Yeah. So we were in a class, only two women in, in an old male class. And that was really more or less the, the reality for a little while. Yeah. But after that, you know, law became more, you know, just women saw themselves more in, in the legal field. And then even uh, when you look at, I'm sure, the, um, the admissions now yeah. probably is 50-50 or maybe maybe 64 those I don't know what yeah. the numbers are but there is no there isn't a sense that law is a preserve for boys or, yeah. or for men yeah. so that has changed a lot um, during her time in law I'm quoting here um, Mayor Dow was involved in three historic cases in Botswana in 1990 she was a uh, the plaintiff in the landmark legal case Unity Dow versus the Attorney General's uh, Chambers, well, not Chambers, which ended the gender discrimination in this nation's nationality laws that had previously not allowed children to derive nationality from their married mothers. The case gained Dow international attention and sparked a wave of changes, eliminating gender disparity in nationality laws across Botswana. This is the landmark case mm -hmm. that changed the trajectory of your your law you know your law life mm -hmm. you want to tell us exactly from your point of view we read about it a lot of mm -hmm. the time what was going on how did you get frustrated enough to go and file and say hey la and then here we are now you changed you changed the rules okay i mean okay i mean first of all you know i was one of few female lawyers around yeah. there were some but we, we were, we were very few in number yeah. and uh, if you look at the time I, at, at a personal level, what happened is that I was married to an American, yeah. okay? And um, so he wanted to go back to school, okay? That's really how the whole thing started at the personal level. Yeah. At the national level, it's a different story as well. Yeah. Because it's national and the personal. Yes, um, so he went back to go to do his master's program. And then I remember now my, my kids are born here to me and him in yeah. Botswana. Yeah. And in terms of the law, they are not Botswana citizens yeah. because... There used to be a, you, you used to, before you could be a Botswana citizen by being born in Botswana, yeah. which is a standard for many countries. Yeah. Citizen by birth in a country, you know, generally gives you citizenship of that country. Yeah. Botswana changed its laws to remove from the statute books citizenship by birth in Botswana. Okay. So you could only be a citizen if you were. Um, um, if you are married, if, yeah. if you are born to a married couple, if your father is a Botswana citizen, Ooh. so they made it, you know, um, discriminatory against yeah. women, yeah. you know, or if you are born outside marriage, if your mother is a Botswana citizen. So the assumption was that if you are born out of marriage, then you have only one parent. Okay, which unfortunately often is a reality in this country, yeah. sad as it is. So you, you got citizenship because you didn't have a father, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. With okay. a regular heart. Yeah, yeah. 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 The first is your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, but if you are born in marriage, then your children, your, 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 you don't become, your father had to be a citizen. Yes. So 
Um, my husband wants to do a master's degree in UEB, mm. having been here for many years. Mm. So, um, so he has to apply for a residence and work permit because he was no longer, no longer a Peace Corps volunteer. Mm. So he needed to residence because it's not his country. Mm. He, so, um, but then the children suddenly were left hanging because, you know, when he tried to um, include them in his application for residence and residence permit, mm. they said a dependent, remember he's not working now, mm. he's dependent on me as a lawyer, he was a teacher, a dependent cannot have dependence. So your children cannot have a residence in this country because you are a dependent yourself. Mm. So I said, I mean, you can't be serious. <laughs> I mean, you just, just can't be serious. So I said, no, that's not going to happen. Mm. So really, at a personal level, and then it hits you, it's affecting you. It's about uh, to break up a whole family. Like, what do they want you to do? Yes. So um, then, so that's really, I said, okay, look, if I was a male, this issue would not even arise. Mm. So that's when I said, no, this is a discrimination against women. Definitely. Around that time, Emma Ambassadi, another uh, Emma Ambassadi organization that, you know, fought for and still fights for the rights of women, you know, equality among the genders, you know, was also making a lot of noise about this, was also mm. making a lot of agitation around this, activism around this, highlighting this as a, as, a, as, a, as a problem. So there were workshops, there were, you know, interviews, jalo mm. mm -hmm. But in terms of um, deciding that like a legal strategy is to go, mm. the way to go, you know, um, many people didn't think it was a good idea. Yeah. You are going to annoy the government, and annoy, you don't want to annoy any government because an, anno an, an annoyed government can be, you know, um, a rather hard government. <laughs> is, is, is this how you, uh, Emma Ambassadi, actually pretty much, let's say not started, but is this what led to Emma Ambassadi starting? By this, this case, can come first, or did Emma Ambassadi come first I uh, as a founding member? No, it came, uh, Emma Masadi came first, okay. but obviously an organization comes up around issues. Yeah. So the issue of citizenship was one of the issues that they identified. Yeah. There are many other issues at the time that people take for granted. For example, you know, at the time there was the issue of uh, um, the domicile of a woman is the domicile of a husband. You know, so in deciding whether, what is your home? <laughs> kind of thing. Okay, uh, there was issue about around the right to um, in some property rights. Yeah. For example, a married man could sell family property without reference to the wife because he was the head of the family. I can ask you from your observation. Mm -hmm. Why do you think all of these laws were so patriarchal? Like Botswana specifically. Why does it feel like little on the a lot of it is, is based on, on, on the boy child taking up everything. Why was our constitution like, I guess, you know, our laws okay. written around that? I mean, okay, so first of all, patriarchy, patriarchy is a world issue. Hey, okay. What the hell? <laughs> hey, that's why it wasn't until recently that, I mean, um, a female could be the, the queen of England. Like, um. I mean, patriarchy is a, is a, is a, is a culture of the world. Um. You know, and over time, you know, we are chipping away at this culture and reforming it hal hal. But also, if you want to digress and talk about Bosabastan, it's not or it's not as as um, as patriarchal as people think. Okay. Well, it's more based on uh, responsibility. I mean, we can maybe it's another you know it's, a, it's another interview. Mm -hmm. But often people assume. It, and it, it's, I mean, I don't know where you come from. Molepul. And I think Leslie, for example, only a female can actually inherit tea. You don't know. People don't know. know for sure That's another thing. The I line is blurred now. Exactly. I, I think with the, with the interface and inter, you know connectedness and interrelationship between the two systems of law, some of the th issues have like been disappeared. Yeah. So, gasa khatla mna inheritance is based on your responsibility. Yeah. Or are you responsible of taking care of the family? No. It's assumed the youngest per, youngest female is going to be married last. And therefore, by the time she had parents die, I got. So if you are similar, I got. So if you are similar, I got. I got. But how about it? 
Wan Talwan. So so um, he, the oldest male gets more raka. Not all the cattle, but what's our raka? I hear that woman, a little bit of 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 a little bit was It was before the individualistic ownership of land. Mm. So in discussing customary law on, on inheritance, one has to, it's much nuanced than people just say. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we digressed, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but it helped because we try to understand the issues that thing because like ดินสุดยายรักอะไรนั่นแหละก็ปั้นช่วยกินสุดแอนบัตรมาอินดับไปลูกหรือบาจัมเปลานี่ลูกหรือฮะบัวมึงมาตั้งไปไปริสาวใน
by denying me mm -hmm. and denying men as well. And so, yeah. so, um, but finally it was decided, I think in 1995. I mean, ma many things happened between the decision and 1995. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the case, I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. I was totally, totally tired, tired, mm -hmm. bone tired. So I took my kids, you know, and w with my husband, we went to the U.S. for holidays, for a visit, to visit his family. When he came back, remember I've won the case. Mm -hmm. They have not changed the law. Okay, when I came back um, at, the, at the airport, I got a now I'm returning to my country. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, and there these two, you know, these two children who are not Botswana citizens, mm -hmm. I'm with them, and their husband, I mean, their, their father is not a Botswana citizen, mm -hmm. that's fine. He's he own a lay residence permit. Mm -hmm. So I guess I should fill in a form to apply for an entry. I got into mm -hmm. the country for them. Yes. Okay, but now my kids are So now, if you think I about you can put them on the plane back. So I just walked through and left them at the at the counter. Oh, no. So, <laughs> and the kids were saying, "Mommy, mommy." I guess. Hey. So we came back to You know. So now it's first because I won my case. My kids are about So if you won't let them in, that's up to you. Mm. So then, of course, the attention was called. So that's, I went in with four days, but I never went back for extra. So it's, it was a... It many, was an ongoing fight. They was, didn't want to lose. Like, it was, it was an ego thing for, for them. But, uh, okay, with all that said, because I'm going to fast track, because the dialogue, like, we, we did start late, so I'm going to have to run through some of these things. Even after you did that in 2006, um, you, you know, you did get into becoming a judge. I, I don't know if we, you want to tell us how you got into being a judge <laughs> and how that happens, because you are first of all an enemy to 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 the the, the incumbent government of the day, because you know you, you check them on their rules and you won. How then do they make you a judge of the high court? I, mean, I, I think you know. I, I must say, to tell you the truth, you know, even during the five years of fighting, yeah. I never felt it was personal. Hey. So I never felt you know hated by the state. Yeah. I never felt by hated by individuals of the state. Yeah. I felt like it, it was a it was a policy fight. It was a it, it was a um, I don't know a viewpoint fight. Yeah. You know, I believed I was right. I believe I'm right today. Yeah. But they believed I'm right. But they, they didn't. I didn't feel threatened at yeah. a personal level. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. So, and uh, so then fast forward, like you say, mm -hmm. after that, after doing the Dawa case for five years, I just could not go and do regular law, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. So that's when I opened Metalizile in Muchud, mm -hmm. which was a, a, a legal center for, me, for women and children. Okay. So I only took case for women and children and around gender issues only. Mm -hmm. So I did issues around violence against women, rape, dependent rape, you know, like um, pushed for the reform of rape laws, yeah. that kind of work. I did, I think, very fantastic work. Yeah. You know. But then after working there in, in 1997, is that it? 1997, yeah. I think that's, a, that's when I was appointed judge, I think. You know, and um, I, I have to honestly say that I was 39 years old. Yeah. Okay. You do not become a judge at 39. You just do not. I mean. I'm 39 right now. Yeah. <laughs> you, um, what? You understand? I can't you know, even imagine it. You know, and I was a female. You don't become oh. a judge as a female. Males, judges. How long have you been running it like Um, For about, I think, seven years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. you had been putting in the work. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are high court judges appointed in Botswana or how at the does time? It at the time, I think some some aspects have changed, yeah. but it was still it was a recommendation of the the JSC to the president. Okay. So, but the the, the, the chief justice had to scout out. You had to have been a lawyer for at least ten years, yeah. which I had been a lawyer for more than ten years. Yeah. So that's the basic um, qualification. Okay. And. Um, but I think it was because of my work that the system respected that. Yeah. The, the system respected, you know, you know by, by that time, you know, I was an international, you know, figure. Yeah. You know, at 39, I mean, laws had been changed in other countries because of our law. Yeah. You see, you could not go, you cannot go to law school today in the Commonwealth and not study the Dow case. Yeah. It just is it's not important. So in a way, I had, you know, so I had put in the work. Yeah. So then, I remember I had been running a crazy local yeah. you know, um, a center where problems came through the door every single day. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Everybody. So people with all kinds of problems, yeah. you know, um, 
and I was always, you know, I, I, I believe I did interesting work. I was yeah. always trying to find, you know, solutions in laws that were not necessarily meant for, you know, um, what they were credited for. I'll give you a very simple example. Yeah. Long before the Domestic Violence Act, yeah. which we, you know, with women, the women, the women, organizations influenced the passage of. Yeah. You know, um, I was using a very obscure little section in the CPNE. The CPNE is the Criminal Procedure and Evidence Act. Mm. What beautiful. Mm. It's very simple. It says that if you believe that somebody's going to breach the peace in respect of you, mm. like harm you, quarrel with you, whatever, mm. you can approach the magistrate. You don't even have to do it right. You can approach the magistrate and say, you know, I want you to subpoena or to call or someone, you know, so and so. Mm. So, they come, so they can come and swear to keep the peace in respect of me. So I use this very little obscure in that to say, you know, <laughs> to, to bring, um, you know, men who were, you know, violent men who were harassing women, to give them, so for the magistrate to actually issue a peace order hey. against them. At first, the magistrate said, what is this? Are you sure? I said, well, read the law. Mm. It says that if you believe somebody's going to breach the peace in respect of you, mm. you can approach a magistrate and ask for an order for them to be brought by the police before you and that they will swear before you that on condition that they were not. You know, yeah. So I use that a lot. And it was quicker than t today's Domestic Violence Act, yeah. which you really had to file papers. File, it was, mm. you know, so, but it was really, I'll give you another, another simple, very simple example. Yeah. You know, um, often women don't want to divorce yeah. because divorce is expensive time-wise, expensive money-wise, expensive emotion-wise. Mm. So you know this marriage has ended, but you are not ready for divorce. Nobody should ever be wearing a, t a, a time piece or what would divorce alone. So what I would do, but often women run away from home, abusive homes, yes. and they run away with nothing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So and I would say, okay, look, I was, I'll write to the local police station. Say my my client will be at house so and so, house number so and so at two o'clock tomorrow, to collect half the curtains, half the fridge. Have the bed. Have, I guess she's entitled to have. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. so that she can go and set up a new home. She is not asking for a divorce. She is not asking that she for a division of the property. She's asking for access and use of her own property. Yes, of half of it. Yeah. So you better be there because I think this man is violent. So if she goes there and if she's attacked, the blood is in her hands, and often the police will be there. Almost always, there'll be a two o'clock to make sure the one guest have the bed, you know, have the utensils, have the curtains. Yeah. You understand? You know, because it's not officially a divorce. She's just coming to get her stuff. And she's saying, yeah. and I have a reason to take that. I, 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 yeah. I want to remove myself from this hostile yes. environment. But I have, I have a right to use my property. You know, and I don't have, an I don't have to divorce anybody today. Yeah. I'll divorce him when I have, you know, I, I, I have the money to do it. Yeah. Or when I've come down. Maybe I'll never divorce him. He can divorce me if he wants. Yeah. Sure. But it's just using the law in ways that people don't use it anymore. Yeah. But uh, what, right now, when people think about the law, they think about self-serving people a lot of the time. It's, it's not people who are out there really, really trying to help people like that. I mean, for you to sit there and actually find a solution on what, okay, this is how we're going to move, this is how we're going to move, mm -hmm. and effect change in your community, mm -hmm. and be selfless about it, mm -hmm. I, I think that also pays homage to how you ended up in, in a position where everyone could see you mm -hmm. and respect you. So... Yo, kudos on that. I didn't Nothing. know at all. Yeah. You know, um, with, with, the, with being a high court judge, uh, uh, how did it change? Like when you got into this <laughs> position, um, because you were never smiling. Hmm? You smiled a lot when you stopped being a, a judge. Is that so? You think? Look at me, man. I'm like, I'm <laughs> loving it because like you, you were always, and they would put that thing on you, mm -hmm. you know, that, that white uh, mm -hmm. thing on you, and you would just be... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mean mugging. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, Hori, did it change you or did you have to act a certain way? How, how, what is the difference between being a judge and, and being an active, you know, um, a litigator? I mean, I mean, first of all, okay, I had been running Metai Zile you know, for a long time. Um, limited resources, the toilet breaks down, you know, I have to go and fix it. You understand? I mean, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to be everything. You know, and then suddenly, and I'm driving this old Land Rover because I could not afford anything better than that. Yeah. You know, before Metai Sida, before the Dow case, I had a BMW. Oh, okay, a BL267. The good always have to suffer. Uh -huh. <laughs> 2167. Two, that was beautiful. Yeah, it was a beautiful. But once, <laughs> when, once I did the Dow case, I had to sell it. I couldn't afford it. I had to put my kids out of private school. I couldn't mm -hmm. afford it. Okay? Yeah. And, you know, I had to. I, bought an, an old blue Hilux mm. with a canopy. 
So, I mean, you have to adjust yeah. to your yeah. circumstances. So then, when I, when I was appointed judge, I, the, I was driving a, a, a Land Rover, mm -hmm. an old Land Rover. I love Land Rovers, I still do. Mm. So anyways, I drive my Land Rover to work my mm. f in, after being sworn in as a as a judge the following day. <laughs> and uh, suddenly, um, I have a dedicated parking spot. I mean, things are really moving up here. I, really, I think I'm going to like this life, you know. And, uh, and this is it. <laughs> yeah. And suddenly, a police officer saluting me. I said, oh. "My God, this is really, really nice." You never had like some imposter syndrome. Is this really me? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and then I go to my office, which is like a huge office, like an apartment almost. You know, it's an office. It's got uh, you know um, a dressing room. Yeah. It's got. I mean, like. It's got its own bathroom. You know, it's But how, how, like, like the family and everyone, like I'm sure everyone was really, really proud of you. Yeah. Especially knowing or knowing what you had to do to mm -hmm. get to that point. The community mm -hmm. also, I'm sure everyone yeah. was like, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm going to fasten it up a little bit because, yeah. uh, 2006. I don't know if no, that's... Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. 2006, as the presiding judge of the case, Yaga Roy Sasana and mm -hmm. others versus the okay. government yeah. of Botswana, um, mm -hmm. Medao ruled against the government's actions to prohibit the Basara indigenous people from living and hunting on their ancestral lands, forcing them to resettle outside the CKGR. She ruled that the government had to restore basic services, allow the Basara to return to the land and obtain hunting permits, and pay damages to those who had been forcibly relocated if they chose not to return. Mm -hmm. 2024, what has changed about the CKGR situation ever since this, mm -hmm. this ruling? Mm -hmm. um, the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, th that was a very complicated case. Yeah. It was a very complicated case. It was the most expensive case Botswana had ever, you know, uh, conducted. Expensive? Is the lawyers... It, 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 even hell, a lot of men, they can imagine it was a very long case. Yeah. How many days, how many years was it? I cannot remember. About 2000, but your name went on for more than about 10 years. It was a very, it was, you know, it was less than 10 years, but it was really long. Mm. It meant we went to the CKG, we did, you know, so it was, it was expensive in many ways. Okay, in that three way. judges, you know, d devoted to it. So it was very expensive in, 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 mm. in, in, in those respects. And it was long, and it was complicated. And for me, you know, but it was a very, for me, it was a very simple, narrow issue. Yeah. Very simple, narrow issue yeah. of good governance. Okay. What was the policy position? The policy position that was articulated by the then Minister of Local Government and Rural Development was that nobody will be removed without their consent. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one thing to say, you can actually say as a government, mm. to say, I'm going to move you from racism, I'm going to move you from whatever, this, mm. whatever, mm. for good reason. Okay? Mm. It's a policy position and move us. We may be struggling with whatever, but you have to have, what is your position? Mm. So that, what's, what is good governance about? It's about being clear what you say the government position is mm. and then following it. People were moved from bo, 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 the, the current joining okay? mm, mm. because there was a position was adopted and then it was followed. You don't say, mm. so mm. for me, it was really about that. Okay. So, but at the end of the day, what has happened since then, really a lot of ambiguity. Mm. The whole issue needs to be revisited. And uh, but about the consult them. <laughs> But you, you need to have patience to, con to consult. They will agree with you if they think this makes a lot of sense. But for like someone who, um, like a layman, who's mm -hmm. really, really trying to understand it, okay. because it's always the question, or why are they being moved? Yeah, I mean... Mm -hmm. For us, by law, we really didn't get into the nitty-gritties of, of the, the, the case. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Why won't government say what they're moving them for? And Lubon, why won't they move? So okay. I, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I never got it. Hey, oh, first mm -hmm. of all, why would they be moved? Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the, the idea was noble. I mean, there was no malice behind the movement. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you got 14, I think it was 14, oh, oh, seven, I can't remember now, maybe seven settlements okay. within the CKGR. Mm -hmm. Some of them with only 10 people. You can't have a village of 10 people. Yes, no, no, no. Yeah. It's, not, it's not viable, economically viable. Yeah. You know, so, and, and also, over time, the people in the CKG get married from people outside. Mm -hmm. I get, mm -hmm. Therefore, the, the, village, the villages are going to grow. So you need some kind of balance. Are you going to leave this as a, as a 
um, wildlife reserve? Mm. If yes, then obviously you have to control the population actually comes and lives there. Mm. So basically it was about negotiating the future, you know, of this very important um, um, public resource. Mm. And I think it was in the negotiations that the government failed. It wasn't, a, you know, the, the, the motives were good. Mm. The idea is that, you know, if, if because Ghana, if you have uh, people come up, I get, mm. and then you have to send them food because most of them, how many do they So what does it mean? It means the destruction is the go. I get, many more is what the matter has committed to do for for population. I get. So if you want to but over the time, over 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 you know, happy country. Like, I we don't type people who are not Musara, who are not Makatla, who are not Mukwenaga. So, come on, so how do we? We don't have to CGR. We both live in Musara. We are. One time, one. So, or, 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 can we exclude you because of your your your, your travel affiliation? Yeah. Should should we exclude you? No, you shouldn't be able to. One time, one. I get how quarter time we should be here. I never talk about that. So, if we look into the future, the motives were good. Yeah. Is the manner of you know, actually executing the the, the failure to consult, the failure to bring uh, on board everybody, mm -hmm. and the way then you do it. And that brings us to one of the reasons that I really, really wanted you here well, is to talk about you know your governance in, in BW and, and and how we can be done better. And I'm moving faster than you know, we expected uh, because of my own fault <laughs> of being. Of being late and getting this also to make a course um you were first elected to the national assembly in 2014 uh, when you were nominated by uh, representative ian kama a specially elected member of parliament mm -hmm. and were appointed as an assistant minister of education and in 2015 became the minister of education and skills development and then you served as minister of basic education minister of infrastructure housing development minister of international affairs and cooperation before becoming a backbencher in mm -hmm. 2020. that's correct you came in hot and it just dwindled. <laughs> um, how did you become a specially elected member of parliament? I think we can start there. I, mean, I, I ran in 2014. Okay, it was and I lost. You ran. Hey. I, I lost, hey. I mean, to um, Re Mangole. Hey. You know, and, but I had worked hard. Hey. So I guess it was uh, a in recognition of you know, um, the work I'd done in the constituency. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's never an easy decision for any president or who to appoint. Again, yeah. Some people had much, may have supported yes. the enterprise from, you know, um, behind the scenes. Some people, yeah. so it's not, it's never an easy thing for any president to say, or these are the six. I think I'm not quite the four. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to be here on the podcast, and we really appreciate you for that. Before we go any further, are you looking to send your parcels from Botswana and South Africa. Expert Express Deliveries BW offers courier and logistics services between Botswana and Joburg on a daily overnight express delivery basis at competitive rates. Now, all you got to do is visit www.expertexpress.co.bw. That's www.expertexpress.co.bw for more information or to book a collection. Or you can contact them on plus 267-7549-8811. Expert Express Deliveries, BW. Anything, anywhere, on time. Remember, you can follow us by just uh, clicking, you know, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything that happens on the local corner multimedia YouTube page. Something like this. So I want to get Keep it locked, man. The booty cast continues with a man unity dial. So with a lot of people who are sitting there thought these were, 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 were favors. Mm -hmm. by, by the president. A lot of the people who were especially elected in that time, no mm -hmm. uh, these were personal favors. Do you, do you ever feel that way? Or did you also feel, okay, this is based on merit? Were there ever conversations where it's like, all right, it, it was, it, it, no, it's, it's not easy. I mean, first of all, after elections, uh, a, a new, the president, the, the new government has just like one elections again. Yeah. There are only four spot, slots. Yeah. Favor? People, you know, debate at, at, at uh, caucus. Yeah. People 
you know, supporting their own, which is to be the case, mm. you know. And I, I know for, for a fact that, I mean, there were two, I mean, if you're looking for a lawyer, I, get, I, was, a, I was a female lawyer, there was another lawyer who had just lost elections, Len, who said that had worked hard in their constituency. Mm. Like a, mm. So, of course, there was like, who of the two do you take? It, it, wasn't, it wasn't like, okay, Gerata, you need to have an argument mm. because no, no, it doesn't work like that. And, and being minister, I mean, you, you were in different portfolios. Um, did you feel like you were affecting change uh, as a minister, um, at the role of minister? Because we have a lot of people who always say well, ministries are literally run by, by uh, uh, permanent sec uh, uh, secretaries. Mm -hmm. When you were in these positions, how did you feel you were affecting change in, in, in those situations? Ministries are different. You know, I mean, there are ministries where the minister plays a greater role, yeah. and somewhere um, they really the pol is more. The policy has to be very clear, but the policy is very clear. Yeah. Execution is uh, then public servants. You know, if you look at um, the ministry of maybe um, yeah, infrastructure, for example. Yeah. You know, because I served there for a little while, and there's hardly anything any work for the minister, really. Okay. Because everything, I gotta get the contract. The, the, it's, the policies, you know, it's about policy for the minister. But mm. there's very little on, I, I got very little to do. But after that, I wanna say sincere. Mm. But if you look at um, minister, minister also on labor and home affairs, where they work permits every day, yeah, residents yeah. permit every day. Yeah. So the minister's role is much more. Like a designer. Mm. So, and then education is a bit of a mixture of both. But education, I, I would say well, education is the hardest ministry. Mm -hmm. It really is the hardest ministry because, um, I mean, first of all, you know, um, there are more than 600 children in schools today. Mm. Okay? Mm. And which means that you are in charge of, you know. 600,000 or? 600,000. Mm. 600,000, I get. Mm. And everyone has got two parents at least. Yeah. You know, right. so every day you are dealing with at least 1.2 people who are unhappy with what you're doing, you know, every single day, mm -hmm. you know. And then it is one of the few ministries few, where you are just every day, every year getting need results. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever says so how many people died at the hospital to judge the effectiveness of whether the, the health. Well, tell them, yeah, oh. So it's, it's really it's a hard ministry. Mm -hmm. It really is a hard ministry because every single year. Three sets of results come out, and we are judged on the basis of those results. It's not about other things. It's not about how safe you kept your children the whole year. Yeah. Because teachers, you know, every single day are parents. Hey. You know, and most accidents happen during wow. holidays. Yeah. Most pregnancies happen during holidays. <laughs> most, which means that the education system, every single day, houses and protects your children from harm. They're supposed to do more, of course. They're mm. also supposed to educate them. But nobody ever talks about that aspect that of it. That protection for the whole day. Mm. The and most amount of time that they spend is at school. It's, it's at school. Um. You know, so, so I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy ministry. With, because I'm, I'm seeing all of these because they, they ultimately say in 2020 you become a backbencher. Mm -hmm. Um, were, were you politically affiliated beforehand? I'm, I'm sure you were. That's why you were able to get in the conversation for specially elected. I got a rent. Uh, Obviously, uh, then oh, no, the rent no, 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 the party. BDP, BDP ticket, yeah. So, b b were you politically affiliated be before you ran? How, how did you get into, into running? No, actually, I, I, I mean, okay. Um, I quit my job. Yeah. I, I, re I retired early from... Um, the from the high court? Yes, M. at age 50. And decided to go and do other things. Okay. M. And I left and I went to teach in New York, yeah. teach law in New York for a semester. I could have stayed longer, but I just didn't like New York. <laughs> so I came back home um. and restarted a law firm, um, which, you know, and then I really started thinking, I mean, what do I want to do? What yeah. do I want to do with my time? Yeah. I started thinking, okay, I used to agitate for legal reform, so I used to, you know, better governance, better government. Maybe that's what I should do. So then I decided to join the BDP mm. and ran on their ticket. Okay. And they were not expecting it. I mean, I wasn't like, I came from a family, my parents were BDP, mm. a BDP family, but I, must, I myself had never, never really been um, that active in the party, or I'd never been a, mem a party member. What about people who feel you went up the ranks too quickly within the party? Because, like you say yourself, you weren't really 
that deep into what was going on because mm-hmm. I, I don't understand the structures of the party mm-hmm. are you identified as someone who's okay capable so we'll we will you know no no i mean in, in in terms of deciding to run <clears throat> anybody can run who's a member oh okay so yeah, no, you don't need party backing at, no, the, at that at that level no you have to be a, you have, like, you have a, to be a member yes okay. but a member can be a two-day member a 10-year member hey, okay. I guess some people have joined the party but never ever run for office hey. because i mean it's, it's not easy to to, to stand you know because I, okay this is my theory <laughs> I think you got in, and because of who you are, a lot of people then, you know, you were able to be voted for, and along the the way, it just dwindled because there were other people who were probably jealous of how you went up. How do you think you lost favor? I don't think, know if you feel you lost favor within the party, but, like, why are we here in a position where now you are launching for the BCP? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm moving, you okay, know, yeah. but, like, some uh, no. of these questions, I want to deal with them as they arise. Mm-hmm. Hore, do you feel you ran out of popularity within the party? along the way because of your rise no i don't think so because um if you when you become a, i mean look at uh, when you become a, a especially nominated especially elected member of parliament yes you know you, you you get there i mean for me i got there from having run in the party so i don't mm. think there was a i mean there is, there's always competition for that those but only four slots yeah. so you can imagine there must be somewhere somebody somewhere who's thinking i worked hard you know in the party i've been there for 10 years yeah. and she's coming I mean, she and then she gets the spot. Yeah. That is normal, but I don't think there was this strong um, jealousy, as as you say. Yeah. Um, I quit the BDP not because I was I'd lost favor, but because I did not believe that it was carrying the values for which I had joined it. Yeah. You know, so I quit being a, a mem- uh, cabinet member yeah. in August of 2020 yeah. because I did not agree with how it was being led. And the culture of any organization is determined by its leadership. Yeah. You understand? It's just matter about his family, his church, his football club. There's only one captain. Yeah. There's only one president. There's only one pastor. There's only one, you know, you understand? Yes, ma'am. And those people determine how things are done. Okay. Whether you can talk fast, you can talk slow, you can talk loud, you can talk whatever, you can talk at all, mm-hmm. you can eat at the table, not, you understand? Yes, so I did not agree with the way in which its leadership was running the party, and I didn't think it was going to change overnight. Okay. And you're a pretty tactical person. Hmm? You're very tactical in like how you think because you know you you, you do law. Um, didn't you think there was going to be backlash by you quitting? Of course. Uh, 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 an appointment by the president. Of course. I mean, I mean, nobody quits being a minister. I mean, nobody quits that four-bedroom house. Yeah, it's pretty nobody nice, that takes, house. you know, quits that black car mm. and the white car, you know, and the trips abroad. Mm. You understand? Mm. You know, so you, did. you know, so <laughs> yeah. So for me, I've never defined myself by the, the positions I've held. I'm unity mm. down. I lived in my, the same house that I've always lived in. I didn't take up those four-bedroom four house that you're talking about. Mm. I live with OD. Your small car cannot even reach my house. Mm. I live in a very, you know, rough, not rough, but in terms of, it's not a great neighborhood, but mm. in the sense that it's not, I didn't, I, well, but that's, that's who I am. Mm. That's where I live, you see. So, um, of course, I didn't want the cut in salary. Mm. You know, it's very painful, you know, but it was something that, I was willing to take because I wasn't willing to compromise on my principles. When did it happen for you? When you realized, like, this is not the party that I joined? What was that moment for you? Yeah, I would say um, I remember driving from my house to my brother's house, you know, and I called a friend in the party and say, I am, I've taken out my calculator. It's always a, uh, my, my statement to say, I'm wondering whether can I live on my reduced salary? <laughs> what do you have to cut out? You know, is it it's ice cream? How am I going to suffer? But because I'm going to hit, you know, there's going to be a hit on my salary, my salary. But I'm I'm going to do it. So she was saying, Ah, oh, you, you I knew you're going to do it. Don't do it. I said, Look, I just cannot. I just mm-hmm. cannot. Um, I I believe in rules, you know, and I believe in 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 good governance. I believe, I I believe, for example, let me give you a very very simple example. You people take it for granted, and you get upset when we talk about it. Okay. There has to be a law or a rule or a policy that says you can take 45 cars from the government pool and 20 motorbikes and give them to a neighbor. 
every expense in government has a source in some kind of rule. Yeah. Yeah. It's not because you are being nice. I want, I want to be nice to you. Yeah. But I don't have the right to take my father's car when I allow him to weekend. That should be a rule. We understand that. So I think we have lost, we, 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 we've lost, you know, the, the ability to even realize what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Which not anchored on something. Look, look, education. budget I mean, just giving, you know, I'm being simple, simplistic. Yes. But there is no expenditure in government. That has, does not have a source in terms of budget. Yeah. I cannot tell you, as a matter of fact, yeah. that in a year's time, the person who decided of 40 drivers can go to Namibia and 20, 20 motorbikes can go to Namibia is going to face an audit query. Yeah. It doesn't matter how nice. I loved Gain Girl. Yeah. I really think, and I think it was a beautiful service. Yeah. But that's not the test. So we, we, we lost the, the the ability to follow rules. So I, you know, if if you look at the the, the issue how Mossad, Mossad is civil, yeah. how a whole um, um, establishment, even parliament, that could think it's just okay, when some Mossad like on a spot of was any unity thing, we saw that our heart was hard, our heart was laid. Because we we what, what what commission was that? What was it a committee? No, it's a, the 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 um. You see, we have Botswana Parliament, mm. but there are also other parliaments out there. Mm. There's a Sadek parliamentary. Okay. There's a Sadek parliamentary forum. Yes, I remember. So that. some of us sit there. There's a, the, the, there is also what we call um. Okay, the Pan African Parliament. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, AU. I guess. Yes, ma'am. Honalia, EC, what the C C. Yeah, East Africa Bloc. No, no, I don't go to Africa. But I go to the Commonwealth. We go there as well. So there are all kinds of other parliamentary formations yeah. where members of parliament are also members of. Okay. But yeah, yeah, the Pan African Parliament. Yeah. So all members of the AU, we sign a contract, we have a treaty, I think. They send five people okay. as representatives to PAP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, the the mula was very clear. One of them must be a woman. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it can come from elected office. You know, Rona. I can. It can go from grade mm -hmm. Some 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 countries have got two houses. I can. Mm -hmm. An upper house and a lower house. But mm -hmm. as long as they come from any of those houses. Mm -hmm. So she was our representative. Go papo as a member as a house of sheep yes, on grade yes, okay. So she loses favor. I can. One see you. Hand see you. Mm -hmm. No, you can't do that. Hape is one thing. Hape, hape, mm -hmm. Well, you know it's not true. Papa, you make a lot of money to go to Papa, by the way. Was this before or after you had resigned as minister? It was after I resigned. This was after you had resigned. Yeah, as because, because you cannot be a minister and be on Papa. And, and, but that's what I'm saying, Honor. At the same time, this conversation is happening while there's still these eyes on you, as far as the, you know, mm -hmm. um, as if you are literally saying you, you don't have any faith in 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 the leadership, you, and <clears throat> in in that a lot of people then thought, okay, look, what's what's going on here? Mm -hmm. What what really could have boiled it down to that point? Where where do you think the rot is? Is it right at the top, or do you think this rot is all the way down in in governance of the whole civil service? Like. How, how deeply entrenched is this? You no, know, I'm not going to comment about the civil service because it's yeah. a different, you know, I'm yes. just going to talk about, I guess, yeah. the party, the BDP, yeah. in terms of, um, I, I think, the presidency is going to be a good one. I don't imagine, it doesn't matter how, you know, gently you want to be, how nice you want to be. I don't imagine how nice you want to be. Different for, I guess. Yes, 
go kwa monsa ga gore ga o tlolo morata ka ntlo go tin eh tshwantse ro monsa ka mabaka ka lo mo mola o ha pa go kwa monsa ya la bo tlaima o le speaker ra gore o resign non tsuitse ro ha resign o bo tsenya unity mo teng ha go ra no ha go wanna ja lo bo mo tena ga la gapela lo bo imisa disciplinary hearing ke gore mo ke gore mo none of that is in the policy of the party no it cannot be ke ra go no go re nna ra ke re le bagane le mola gore mola wa robi wa go hana eh wa robi ya la mo go sira so so then i said no i cannot take that slot mm. but people think okay because ke ma adi ba because kana papotsa na ha parliamentary na in on recess mm. generally so it's two weeks you get a lot of money mm. you know because it's another job anyway yes but so think it okay what adi ma la ba go sa chele eh a bana So at this point in time what do we what, what, what when when did the rule bending or rule breaking <laughs> <laughs> start happening uh, in the BDP because you were in there um, at the mercy of uh, Re Ian Kama and um, and ultimately you were in there with Re um MEK Masisi when when do you think you know it all went it all went down you know when did all of this was it gradual was it immediately after which But it, 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 in, in terms of the disrespect of rules, Aban, mm. uh, I would say honesty started with Remasis, in my opinion. Mm. In terms of, you know, in terms of just, I'll give you a very simple example. You know, um, when I, my first five years yeah. in, in parliament, and of course in, as a minister, mm. okay, it was very, very clear. There was a division between party and government. Mm. Okay? Yes, ma'am. We could not take a BX to a BDP event. Yeah. It was not allowed. Go to hotel. Go to the high. I agree with you. Never thought that I would have felt like I had. We just start bush. You know, bullet bush. I hope you don't. Hey, that bullet bush area. Yes, remember. I say I agree with you. We used to have our our congresses there. Oh, we can have Maharaj. Oh, Maharaj. Yes, ma'am. Hey, if there's going to be a BDP event, go Maharaj. I get cut two o'clock. No, that's why we are going to do. Pike, we love it. We are going to do what we want because the BX was not allowed to pack. It's a BDP event. Yeah, on, there was a separation between party and government. Yeah. If I went on a trip, who do I go to? Mente, go Francis Town. I get. I was not allowed then to mix my go. Who do I go to? Mente. I was not allowed then to go on a, maybe a house to house or a rally. Mm-hmm. Because I was now blurring the line, the yeah. line between party and state. Yeah. But, but now, in fact, you know, uh, my understanding totally. I mean, there is actually, I think, a training school in Tanzania. Yeah. I like, uh, you know, by sponsored by the Chinese, yeah. that is actually trying to teach governments how to blur this line, so that how we learn. Because when they are talking about the Nabi TV, they are not talking about the Nabi TV. They are talking about the Nabi TV. They are talking about the Nabi TV. Blurring of lines. It's kind of like what you say. This is school. Hey, hey, you can, you can, you can, you can actually um. The t- t- you can Google it. Ways. You can Google it. You can Google it. I'm not definitely will. Yeah. I'll check it out. So the whole idea, you know, if you want to, st- obviously that that's true. If you want to stay in power forever, yeah. start making. Is that public servant? Can we be deep? 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 Can we be It would be in anyone's interest or any leader's interest to purposefully b- b- blur the line. Of course, because because then you 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 cement yourself in place. Yeah, it's all intended to cement yourself in place, because getting incumbents is you know it really is it's very difficult to find an incumbent. How much has someone made him? Um, Uruwa Molanza, what happened again? Just remember that again. You coach your football, or that Uruwa again. They already have you know, they're the connection, they're banalim, banalim. But the, the, the longer you now blur these lines. You know, so that how could how we sort of motole? Another motole when he was walking, he lay how to get cheap matcher. When I matcher, he lay mobi DP. Can they na ya kwa? He lay one. He lay minister. Go to 
Okay, so uh, I read some it's a it's a propaganda yeah, TV because it's been there for a while though. You're near the TV, mm. um, you know, propaganda yeah, on or messaging what thing is usually based on the party. But this this is not the only administration that has done no, it. No, no, it's I mean, hey, of, of course. Administrations of, have always done yes. it as well. Mm -hmm. the, you you made a drastic decision in, in in both incidents where you knew you you know you were behind the battle of uh, you know of the gun because mm -hmm. of quitting as a minister yeah. and now you double down mm -hmm. on on this masibuku um uh, issue uh, did you think you were going to be holding your party to account and then guys would come and sit and say yo this is a brilliant mind you know out here she's one of the ones we should be listening to because you know she's made some changes in botswana did you think they were going to sit down and have a conversation Mm. Oh, I mean, did you think what I has to say? Nancy, there comes a point. I get land, you are hoping, worry. I mean, but I'm going to battle who support on this again on this journey. But but I will hold into that in them. Worry to help the party. Hey, I mean, like, I think happened in the scenario 11. We are told that we live in a democracy. I get it. We are told, I mean, if, if you look at um, even newspapers of maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when there was still print media. Yeah. And you look at the... Uh, the, the, the front pages. Uh, you know, people writing to the editor, not just to the editor. But, but people used to be free. Mm. Yeah, and man. that did not affect anything. Mm. When I was doing the Dow case, I did not even... I could meet Neta Mohai at a function and we would... But he would not even raise the issue. Mm. I didn't feel, I didn't, I, I felt that I had, there was a freedom of thought mm. and a freedom of expression mm. at the time. But mm. there isn't that anymore. Because, you know, you exp what you say can affect you. Mm. Seriously. It can affect whether you get a job, whether your sister gets a job, whether mm. brother gets a job. Mm. It's a fact it gets a tender. But don't they see you? Let they see you. Is it as extreme as people say it is? Because um, we are in an election year, so a lot of us really want to know what we're going to be voting for. Mm -hmm. Register mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. the, you know, registration. Mm -hmm. So go and register to vote. Mm -hmm. um, because it is an election year, we try to um, put a microscope on these issues. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me, within the party, mm -hmm. there was no one who at least, like, of, 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 a, of a higher ranking, gave you a call to say, yo, I understand exactly what you're talking about. You were on your own, on your own. <laughs> I mean, can I, 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 I guess my, my, my difficulty is, how do we get to a point where we thought disagreeing with your leader is disrespect? Yeah. Because the leader is all powerful, it's all knowing, it's all right. And I'll give you a very, very simple example. Since in the nineteen sixty six, since Nagwa Hasarets, Ko B D P no one they call um the backbench caucus. Okay? Just like cabinet meets alone, the backbench could meet alone. Okay? That one was closed last year. Because when you're not getting a cable, yeah, the cable get the whip of the whole house. Oh, it's the whole house, okay. Of, of the, 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 I got the whip. But the, the back bench now are not allowed to meet alone. How can somebody disallow you to meet? <laughs> and then you agree, or, kuro, give me a kuro, kuro, and and you actually don't meet. Kuro, I don't understand how anybody has the power, the right, the authority to tell you, or, let's get a cup of there should be because of COVID, no one group. Yeah. group in your He is disbanding the backbench caucus. Urile alaga. Hai se arre. Let's call na group. But then, okay, so. But there's this fear. What is that fear? What is that fear? Is that honor your life might get affected? Um, negatively and no, I can, no, I who's can. spying on who? Is everyone spying on everyone? Because it, it feels like it's a paranoid um, but situation. But, 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 but even more. then, I mean like how are you an adult male <laughs> running your own house with a wife and children or an adult female running your own house and then you go to work and somebody can tell you 
Kore Ubori Diman. Huh? I don't understand that. Hey, Tata. I don't understand that. Huh? Um, is it because of um, intelligence um, agencies? Is that what has made people more anxious and more paranoid? Hore, now we think, everyone thinks their phone is tapped. The minute we cry like an echo, they're like, ah, come on, you really low. People are putting their phones in microwaves at meetings. I've heard big homies. Why are you ready Is it because of the intelligence um, 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 office? And, you know, do you have any type of relation with them? Because you're fearless at this point. Like, I, I think you don't mind them coming at you at all you already have whatever you plan on doing we'll know about that i guess when the year goes on but like why aren't you afraid of you know your phone being tapped or your livelihood being affected okay i mean okay first of all is is it are the reasons for maybe i don't know people are raised differently yeah. i don't know um can i get get i still don't understand how you know, you. I am fathomable. It's Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt yeah. that we created a culture, you know, of um, of, of fear. Yeah. I get of the you know, of, of, the, of the, that agency. Yeah. I mean, the drama of 2022. Kuchara watu, hosunzo kuchara ulo hosun. Kuri, we we kuri. I mean, it was a movie that was badly choreographed because I uh, So now, in terms of, <laughs> you know, am I afraid of for my life? Okay, um, I'm 64 years old. Yeah. I believe I've done you a look, lot. You I've done a lot. I've, I've done a lot in my life. Huh? Yeah. I, I hope that I will meet my demise. I will meet. It. I, I can't stop my death. I mean, I yeah. I can try to avoid. I mean, I don't know if you can stop death, but. Everybody has a path. Um, um, do I not do something? Is that about to? I, I I don't not do something because mm -hmm. uh, My mother used to say, mm -hmm. uh, So at the end of the day. Um, happy you are, you know, people take your power and when you start being afraid of them, yeah. you see, they're, you know, monsters, there are monsters out there and, you know, so I, I, it's not like I'm, I'm, I become careless or reckless. Yeah. Um, I still know that, you know, um, bad things would happen to me, yeah. you know, and, um, but I'm not going to get that to limit what I say, to limit how I live and to limit the path that I've taken. Definitely. Yeah. Um, like, I keep saying it throughout the whole interview that I have to rush, but I have so many questions to ask you. Um, you, you, you launched um, at the BCP um, this past week. Mm -hmm. um, this is after a long silence. So, um, where were you? Were you in hiatus? Like, <laughs> where were you at? Were you in parliament? Like, and then out of nowhere, boom. You're wearing the lime green. Um, how long did it take for you to make that decision? Okay, first of all, I joined the BCP, I think, towards the end of last year. Okay? Oh, okay. You know, officially. And officially. Garata. Garata. Um. Okay. And, but before that, I had to think very carefully as to what was going to be my next political home. Yeah. You know, and I had many, many meetings with uh, Russell Shando. Okay. I respect that man. Yeah. I really think what I, um, like I said, can I... Uh, I think one psychiatrist, Freud, once said, yeah. you know, show me a... a, a, a Sigmund Freud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he said, show me a 12-year-old, and I'll show you the man. Yeah. Meaning what about 12 year formed. Yeah. You can say, show me a 12-year-old girl, I will show you the woman. Or your character, you know, whether you are inclusive, whether or not you are, you know disagreeable whether or not you love peace whether you're not introverted or extroverted mm. by 12 we know who you are mm. so i can believe that uh, people think who think that but why change but i change about it just amplifies your character mm. so I, he, he is a 
He's someone who consults. Yeah. He's someone who's concerned about what other people are thinking. He's someone who, you know, does not make rash decisions. And um, so after listening to him, talking to him, you know, understanding his vision about the BCP and understanding the um, where, where he sees himself. Mm. And, you know, so I figured I can work with this man. Um, mm. um, as far as, you know, Muchudi mm. and um, your, your, your loyalists mm. over there, how, how, are they, how are they feeling about this, this, this new move that you've made over to the BCP? Mm -hmm. I, I've been for, for, I went to 11 villages yeah. I got, and did house to house. And eleven villages. Mm. The go come there, have go do kwenye go budumani. Everywhere. Borasa sa. Ne hasika go. Hasika go. Eh, kimo kimo west tiger. Eh, okay. Kimo west tawara rumu borasa sa. You know, and um, I honestly would say. Kimo west ili east. Eh, kimo kimo west, central and east. Kwa karan tu rapi. Eh, I get there to be two. Eh, now there are three. Oh, okay. Eh, so I'm in Katlen West. Katlen West. Eh, eh, and I think Katlen West. Um, if we recall, 2014, I did get more than 6,000 votes from Katling West. Mm. Okay. Mm. I lost, mm. but I did 6,000 people thought I wasn't a bad person. Mm. You know, <laughs> and most of them are still alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, mm. you know, so, and um, the atmosphere on the ground, hey, like, people are tired. Mm. People want change. People are, you know, are hoping for something different. And people know that if they stay with BDP today, I got, yeah. they will continue. To, nothing's going to change. And it's not going to change because there are no new policies. Yeah. What are, you, you have to convince people that suddenly the education system is going to, system is going to improve. Suddenly the health system is going to be. Suddenly there's going to be jobs. Yeah. How? If if, if we are going to go I mean, like how? But, but what do you think it would take? Because like for for as the devil's advocate, for some people also know okay. Um, what if, you know, some of these parties come on and they don't know how to work the car, you know, they're new. Then, you, then five, <laughs> five years in the life of a country is mm. five years. Then you remove them in five years' time. And then you remove them in five you, years. You can't, you can't stick with, you know, go to, they, happy, go to, even if BDP were angels, yeah. which they are not. I, got, um, I mean, you have to ask yourself, I mean, what kind of democracy is there that after 57 years, you can still be, go to, how can you say you have multi-party democracy? When you actually have only one party ruling. For 57 years. And, and if you think about it, incumbency is, 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 a, is, is, is strong. An incumbent is always strong. That's why this um, um, political party funding yes. is important because we need the, the playing field to be level. That's actually where I was trying to go. Yeah, because How is BCP going to make its money? Because it seems UDC is okay. We know BDP is okay. How does the BCP um, get political funders that we are not going to be suspecting for Liborne because a lot of they want to privatize our minds? Because all of these things keep being said or, you know, whatever vested interest people have in Botswana, that's how they get through. They get through the political parties. So no, BCP is never really, we've never really known how you know the 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 the, the political party Yabone is funded, okay. and also uh, first of all there are two things here. First of all, I agree there is this new plan. Yagorwa political party funding from yeah. from the national purse, yes. which I think is important. But there's other thing that you know, um, you 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 anybody listening, Agar, mm. you need to invest in your future. Mm. You need to invest in future in terms of time, in terms of money. Otherwise, somebody's going to invest in your future. Okay. <laughs> so, you understand? I understand. Yeah, yeah. so at, at the end of the day, I mean, people who uh, fund political parties, there are two types. Okay. That the type that actually um, are saying they want policies that, you know, um, strengthen democracy. Yeah. They want to be able to, if you come and invest in your country, I want to have a fair shake. Yeah. I'm not saying give me this contract, yeah. but I'm saying here, clear rules and regulations of how a contract is awarded. Hey. I'm not saying you understand, I'm, I'm saying you know, don't after two days tell me that I'm corrupt and bump me out without a, a proper um, an efficient justice system. Efficient. You, you understand? So basically that's what I'm saying. Hey. There are people, that, that's one thing. There are hey. people who, who like we say may actually target a particular contract. You don't want those people. You want people, you, you want investors who are saying, I got, yeah. you know, I want to support you. Not so that you can give me a tender, but so that you can actually strengthen your laws in a way that if I'm competing, 
it can be a fair competition. Mm. They should be able to invest in, you know, in the BCP, mm. saying, hey, I want you to, to win, okay? mm. because I believe that you believe in the rule of law. Mm. You believe in a fair shake. Mm. You believe that, you know, um, you understand? Mm. No, I fully understand. And you believe in democracy. Mm. As it stands right now, a lot of people feel like the BCP is a bit shaky because of the, the, the breakup that happened just recently. Um, we're about to close up as well. Mm -hmm. but what, what state is the BCP in right now, its leader, and also the relationship with the... the I don't know if you know about the relationship with the Bonobore, the Tapeloke Rapids, and everyone mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. who, who decided to jump ship. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the state of the party right now? Solid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, B the BCP is the only party that has done its primaries, the only party that actually have um, <laughs> at least 50 um, candidates on the ground. Yeah. No other party. How did the this you, year? You have 50 already? Of course. You know? And so we have, you know, 11 to go. And as I speak, probably, you know, maybe, you know, uh, it's more than 50. I'm talking yeah. about last year's figures. Yeah. So, but BDP ha doesn't have one candidate on the ground. I guess. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the only party that seems the only party that's actually um what's the game? unveiled is the key elements of his manifesto it's yeah. the only party it's the only party that's right now doing something new actually presenting the chapters of the manifesto yeah. i don't know if you saw the chapter that was there was a um unveiled go masamalo okay. masa primary um, on economy okay on the 28th is on lens and housing okay Okay, so every week until, you know, on the 8th of May, I'm in Francis Town unveiling the governance yeah. um, part of the manifesto. So the idea is that we engage Bazoana in the development of the manifesto. We have the chapters, mm -hmm. we have the write-up, we're presenting, that's our, that's our dream, that's yeah. our hopes, that's what we, you know, that's our, the path we want to take. Mm -hmm. And we are saying, what is your comment on it? Mm -hmm. It's the only part that's doing that. Yeah, you sound ready, and you've all you like the t the team itself sounds completely ready. Um, the the launch that was happening recently in LA in like the the, the rallies. Do you enjoy rallies? Like I I don't know. Have you have you done your I fair share? It, it depends <laughs> on what what you think a rally is. I got. I you know. go to Hong Kong Freedom Square where thinking people are cussing each other out. Sometimes <laughs> some people are just you know. Um, I mean the the, the launch um, um, which was on the tenth of February. Yeah. I got. It was a launch is now the official announcement by the party that this is the party's candidate. Mm -hmm. So we are doing launches at, and, until the, I think by June we should be done, I think mm -hmm. before June. Okay. So Ngawana was being launched uh, this past weekend. So, um, but a launch is a public announcement. Mm -hmm. So of this is up. And it this was, yes, mm -hmm. it wasn't a rally in the sense of like, it was speeches. Do you ever Solid. do rallies? Do you do rallies though? Yes, in, I do. I've done in, in the past. The, yeah. Because that's always like the, the, I think the most intimidating part of being a politician. Is that so you think? Hey, when I'm about to find a lot of people, I'm going to have a lot of people in my school. And then they just start, you know. So I'm always trying to figure out, is there a space depends, for like proper yeah. debate there? And people actually hear what you're saying. I mean, that's a good question. But um, rallies really are not the only way that you communicate with people. Um, when you when you're campaigning for, for elections, like you do rallies, but rallies are more um, a noisy gathering of yeah. your own supporters. Yeah. So, yeah. But the other, there's house to house. They are yeah. very, very effective. Okay. I, I do that. Okay. You can have neighborhood teas with people who, you can have someone host mm. the neighborhood people and call people who are not my BCP to come also. Yeah. Okay. So um, there are many ways in which to communicate with, with, the, um, yeah, with the public. Um, I, some people might not know that you are one of the people who co-founded Baobab uh, Primary School, which is <laughs> also growing every year. The Dow Academy is also um, a place. I have a friend whose daughter goes there, Loretta. Mm -hmm. um, what is the Dow Academy? Because I've seen like a lot of what goes on online. It's, it's, it's a, um, just to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it is a, um, um, what do you call, kindergarten to high school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is a high school. It's a, it's a kindergarten, primary, and high school in Muchuti. Okay, yeah. so yeah. anyone can bring their kids over. Of course, of course, yeah. of course. How are the rates? Are we, are we, are we over over the top? No, we how, are not. How are our rates for p private schools? I think because I have you here. Mm -hmm. How are they put together? Because now they are looking like not by Bob's or Dow Academies, mm -hmm. but right now, is don't you think it's about time that they were regulated? 
Um, in terms of, I don't, I don't, I... I'm, I'm not saying what well, people should regulate how, you know, people run their schools, but in, I'm saying it's... In terms of price? Of, in terms of price, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do you take your child to private school? Unfortunately, because you think the public school is not doing so great. Like, yeah. I mean, when, when, when we founded Baobab, yeah. uh, my daughter was at, at then Westwood yeah. in the Lahab Marawha, you see, Musa Ganaha Marawha, Marua Bul. Mm. Okay, mm. and she was standard four, and uh, the price, the, the, the you know, the fees went so high that I, I, I just couldn't afford them. Mm. So me and a few other women, we called a public meeting at the at the city council, at the city office, whatever. Go community, we Go community, go molo. Eh. To say people, we can start our own school. People thought, mm. you know, that's not impossible. That's not possible. Mm. So that's really how we started the school. Wow. So invited people to say, and not everybody was persuaded by this, seven of us started the school. Seven women started Baobab back then. And that's where my kids went to school. Mm -hmm. Because I felt like I figured I can't afford public school. I, mean, I can't afford private school. I'm going to form my own. Okay, start my own. So that's really how I took a year off from law school, mm -hmm. from, from, from pract law practice, mm -hmm. to, to actually oversee the building of the school. Mm -hmm. Okay. By that time, I, I knew a lot about, you know, how many toilets a, a school must have, you know, the mm. regulations. So that's really how we started Baobab. But we later sold it. And that's when I decided to, you know, with my family to start TDA or the Dawa Academy Kumuchut. Mm. But unfortunately, then COVID hit. The COVID okay. was a problem to yeah. everyone. Yeah, so to everybody, I guess. Mm. But in terms of um, regulating school fees i don't know that it's a it's a good idea yeah. i mean it's like regulating the price of you know you, i mean it's, it's a free market economy yeah. yeah i think the trick is in you know make public schools compare, again. yes <laughs> you see and you, know, you have a completely different way of of, of 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 seeing things from our conversation um you have like your your, your interpretation of things is, is is yours. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like I can't say I compare it with anyone else's mm -hmm. um, because like even with with where people could be petty about issues and, and you, you try to look at, you know, what's fa what's fact, what's law and I think we, we get caught up in our emotions mostly mm -hmm. in, in, in in governance, in what mm -hmm. you know we are trying to vote for. People mm -hmm. end up personally attacking each other. I just wanna ask one last question about mm -hmm. um business people getting into politics because mm -hmm. um, our president has a lot of people who are in business and now, you know, one of the technocrats, uh, what, what people call technocrats, uh, they feel what have taken over what it should be governance. And like you say, what do you think can be done to fix this? And what would the BCP do if they got into parliament and, you know, okay, how um, it? I, I, I missed your, you know, the, the, uh, no, the, the, the basic question. Yeah. You are saying people who are... Uh, business people. Because uh, now I look at the technocratic and I look at the business people saying, find I don't, themselves I don't, in, in, I don't, in, 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 in civil government. service. I don't think so. I, mm. I really think that for the longest time, we have very, very well-educated uh, public servants. Mm. You know, and um, we used to be very proud of them because we let them do their work. Yeah. We did not interfere in the do past. Do you feel that there were a lot of technocrats that came in with with um, the incumbent Hume president. Uh, Humpion is unclear how people get hired. It's unclear how people, you know, you, you can even just create a position. I can not what people don't understand. you know, um, just to digress a little bit. Um, there's something called the establishment, uh, establishment register mm. or register. You're you, you supposed to be able to see what, 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 what education. Mm. There's supposed to be so many directors. How about we change? How about not twelve? So we apply. We apply when the Minister of Education. I get. We have to look the lower panel. We have to lower panel. We have to civil servants. Sorry, we need another position here. We have to go to the upper panel. We have to prove. We have to cabinet. So you can't just overnight create slow boring special advisor to the president. You can't do that. You shouldn't be able to do that. You should not be able to do that because when I was standing five, so this senior special, you can just create positions without process. That's a problem. That's a problem. But that's that's what's happening. That's what's going on right now. Because I don't want to rat the mala. I don't want to rat. 
<laughs> hey, Mendo, thank you so so much for hanging out. Like you open up our eyes so much to a lot of things, and um, good luck um, for, for 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 this year. I don't know if you have any last words for our people before I shut it down. Well, thank you very much for, for, you know, for this conversation. I thought yeah. that 90 minutes was too long. You told me 90 minutes is nothing. I've been talking now forever, so I guess you are correct. Thank you. <laughs> Rina, <Wayne. laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that is our show. We'll check you out next week. It's been brilliant. This is the booty cast right um, from um, Leo's Inn. And uh, shout out to Local Corner. Peace. Identities. <laughs>